Today we're talking dissection tools. To dissect means to take something apart. And even though we're in the sixth grade here at Dexter Middle School in New Mexico, we're needing to learn about dissection because we're going to be doing some dissection at the end of our school year and then you'll be using these skills and these same tools as you go through the rest of middle school and on into high school for different laboratories that you'll be doing. The first tool that we'll be using is called a dissection tray. This is what this is. Most of you have seen these aluminum baking sheets at home. What we've done with this one is we've put a layer of black wax at the bottom of the uh, table. You can see the smiley face there and all the pin marks. These, uh, the wax is so we can use pins to hold things down in the bottom of the tray and hold them in place while we're working on them. When it comes to tools, we have approximately 25 dissecting kits. We have about 10 of these plastic ones that look like this when you open them up. And we have about 15 of these nicer ones in the vinyl cases. The tools inside are about the same and that's what we're going to go through right now. The first tool that we have when we're dissecting is the scalpel. This is our precision cutting tool. We have three different kinds of scalpels and we'll be going through them one by one for you so you can see what they are and how they work. Now a scalpel is a very, very sharp piece of uh, equipment and we want you to be very careful. I want you to notice that it doesn't take a lot of effort. I'm just barely pushing on that with the scalpel and guess what? We've cut through the paper. If I push just a little harder, I can really do some damage. In this case, this is just paper, but I've cut all the way through the paper and into the wax below. These instruments are so sharp that if you were to cut your finger, you probably wouldn't feel it until you looked down and saw that you had been cut. All right, the three basic scalpels that we have, we'll start with this one. This is called a number 21. It has to do with the size and shape of the blade. This is our all-purpose general scalpel that's used to make your first cuts. We have a number 15 scalpel. The 15 scalpel is preferred by plastic surgeons and others that do professional and very precise cutting. And it has a smaller rounded blade at the end that is beveled or sharpened on both sides. The last one is called a number 12. The number 12 blade is the one that's preferred, especially if doctors are still using stitches or what they call sutures. This one you can actually run underneath the suture along your skin and cut the sutures. So, these are the three scalpels, the number 21, the number 12, and the number 15. You will need to know all three of these for a quiz. A couple of other things that we need to know about our scalpels is how to hold one. We hold one like a pencil. We prefer to hold it like a pencil because then my forefinger becomes part of the blade and wherever my forefinger goes, that's the direction that the blade goes. Some of you I know were taught to hold pencils with all four fingers, something like that. Please feel free to use that. You can also kind of hold it like a steak knife where you've got it this way or if I turn it and I look down on it, I have my finger on top so that I can push down but we prefer in the lab to hold it like a pencil. We find that this gives us much better control. So there's the scalpels. The other thing that we have in our kits that you'll be using are called forceps. Now around your house, you probably call these tweezers, but in the laboratory and scientifically, we're going to call these forceps, and we have several different kinds. And really, what you need to know is what we call a smooth forceps. Yes, even this little set of teeth in here, these are called smooth forceps. Or you need to know 
the grasping forceps. This has a little tooth here and it's used to grab a hold of something so that you can pull on it and get it out of the way. Another thing about forceps, please be careful. You can over squeeze these. If you push this down where they're flat, you are pushing way too hard. It doesn't take a lot of effort. You just very delicately, watch this, just two fingers here, very delicately put it down, squeeze until you've made contact, and then pull it out. There's no need to squeeze it until it goes together. The last type of forceps that we have here, these are curved in. This is so you can reach in and uh, pluck something out, or if you need to, where you can see it, you can get down there and pluck curved forceps. The plastic forceps have come to us through several of the kits that we've bought for different science classes through the years. So all of these together, forceps. The next major tool that's in here that you'll be using are the scissors. There are two basic kinds of scissors that come with our dissecting kits. We have the blunt end scissors. They're blunt end because they're rounded. Keeps them safe, kind of like our safety scissors that we have when you started in school in the kindergarten. This has a very strong and thick side that backs up the very thin and sharp side. EMTs and paramedics will carry these. This is for cutting clothes off of people in a hurry if they need to. The other thing is that doctors will use these for cutting off large flaps of skin or for cutting inside of whatever tissue they need to get out. Very big general cutting tool. The other one is the sharp scissors, of course, two sharp sides put together. These are for delicate, precise cutting. We also have one other one. We keep this in our extra tool uh, tray that we have. This is a curved set. These were set up so that you can put your fingers in it and you can actually go along if you need to at an angle but still keep a precise straight cut. So curved scissors, the sharp scissors, and the blunt scissors. More tools that we use in our dissection kits. The next set of tools that you'll need to know from our dissecting kits are the teasing needles and the probes. Probe is just that. It's a very useful, sturdy tool. It's used for probing into tissue if you're not worried about damaging it. You can also use this to pull things out of the way or hold things back. Okay, that's a probe. Teasing needle. We have a couple of different varieties of teasing needles for you to use in the laboratory. We have this one here. This is just simply a needle that's been put onto a plastic handle. And we also have the very nice one with a collar here. You can pull the needle out and replace it if it wears out and you have this nice handle. In any case, the teasing needle. Teasing means to go into some tissue and if you don't want to use a scalpel, you can use the teasing needle and you hold it just like a pencil again. Use a teasing needle, you go in and you can tease the tissue apart or you can tease the object out of wherever it's embedded. It's a teasing needle. So teasing needles and the probes. And as you can see, the wax gets all up under your fingernails and everything. So please beware of that. A couple other tools that we keep in our kits or we keep in the extra tray include the ruler. We have the American Imperial system on top, the metric or SI system on the bottom. The metric system is what we'll be using in class. We have a magnifying glass. It has two lenses. The first lens is just for general magnification. The bottom lens is for a more intensive magnification, like a bifocal lens in your glasses if you have those. And then we have an eyedropper for taking samples of liquid, or maybe we have some food coloring that we're trying to stain something so we can see it better. All of these will be available to you to use. How do they go back together into the kit? Well, let me show you. Here's our little plastic kit. We've taken everything out of it. I did leave the curved forceps in here, so we'll put those back. First thing that will go back in is our scalpel. Scalpel goes in, 
blade down and again if you're handing tools to somebody you hand them handle first notice that I've turned this so that the back of the blade is against my hand so I'm not going to cut myself as I hand this off to somebody there we go handle first and you should have been taught this at home you always handle sharp things with the handle first we're going to put it in that third slot we're going to put our probe into the slot next to it notice that I'm putting all of the sharp things pointed down our teasing needle will go into it right next to that. Our eyedropper goes into this little slot in the middle. Now, in the scissors, you'll notice at the bottom we have these two prongs. The blunt ended scissors go on the bottom because they're larger. And we'll put the smaller sharpened, sharp end scissors up on top. And there we have our completed dissection kit. This one is left blank intentionally. I'm sure at one time something went in there but through the years that's become lost and we have these kits set up for you. In the vinyl kit, here we go, let me get my grasping forceps. They go right here in the end. We have our blunt scissors, our sharp scissors, our smooth forceps. Over on this side we have our probe. We have a place for our straight teasing needle we have a place for a curved teasing needle and you'll notice that these go into a plastic pocket and we have a place for our number 21 scalpel the number 21 scalpel will be your standard scalpel that's in all dissection kits if you need a number 12 or number 15 you'll come over to our extra tool tray and you'll get one out and that ladies and gentlemen is our dissection kits a little bit about what the different tools are and how they're used.